Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the Arturia Beat Step Pair Controller in Reaper. Now you're probably wondering why I chose this controller to make a Reaper video about, as I very rarely make videos about specific brands of controllers because there are so many of them. But I chose this one because it's kind of unique. First of all, it's fairly cheap. It's also very well built compared to most cheaper MIDI controllers. It's fairly heavy and a good portion of it seems to be metal. At least it doesn't feel like a cheap toy. But I mostly chose it because of how well it works within Reaper and how creative you could be with it. But first, I want to remind you that it's not really that useful if you're a piano player or someone that likes to play keyboard as an instrument. As you'll see, we could play it as an instrument. It just has pads instead of actual keys. So it's much more useful for things like drums and samples, although it can trigger any keyboard sound we want. It's just harder to play it as a conventional keyboard. It's more useful for synths as a random arpeggiator to create rhythmic parts that are much harder with a regular keyboard or MIDI controller. But it could also do so much more as everything on here can control any function in Reaper, including soloing and muting tracks with the 16 pads or using the 16 knobs to control anything from volume or pan to any knob or fader in any plugin. It's completely customizable within Reaper. But in this video, we're going to focus on using it as a MIDI controller for synth, drums, bass, and leads. We're using the built in arpeggiator, which can lock to Reaper's tempo, and playing some drum and synth parts with the pads to create a musical piece. In a future video, I'll be showing you how to control Reaper's functions directly with it, as that can really be done with any MIDI controller, although it's laid out really well with this one. So let's take a look at what this controller can do. We'll start by setting it up. Let's go to the Options menu and choose Preferences. Then go over here to MIDI Devices and find the Arteria Beat Step right here on the input. And we'll start off by double clicking it and enabling it right here. So now I have a project already set up with a synth, some drums, a bass, and a lead synth. I'm using the Vital Synth right now, and it's set up to my MIDI input. I have this keyboard set up down here, just so you can see the incoming MIDI. So if I play the pads, we hear the sound. And by default, it goes up by half steps, like this. So we could perform a MIDI performance or use it as an arpeggiator, like this. Hit this button, we could see all the pads light up in blue. So if we hit play, it plays a 16th note part. And we can hit the pads to turn some of them off. Now it's eighth notes. or any rhythm we want. Now, right now, the tempo is adjusted by this big knob. So you can make it faster or slower. But it makes more sense to lock it to Reaper or Reaper's tempo. So let's go back to our preferences, go over here and double click it again, turn on enable input for control messages, go to the output, enable it for output, and send clock to this device. So now we could hit this button right here. For external sync. And if we hit play over here, we 
it locks to Reaper's tempo. Or we can hit play over here. And it plays from here as well. So it's also useful to use the controller as a transport. Hit play. And it plays Reaper. Hit stop and it stops it. And as you can tell, it's just playing one note over and over again, but we could change the notes with our knobs. Just grab a knob and change the note. And we could do it randomly like this. And we wind up with this. But as you can tell, it's not really in key, but we could adjust that by holding down shift. Notice it's set to chromatic. We could change it to major, minor, or any other scale we want. But let's keep it simple and use major. And now let's adjust those knobs, and it will only allow us to choose notes from the major scale. <laughs> It's a bit more musical. And we could also change things by holding the shift key and changing the direction from forward to reverse. Or alternating it from forward to reverse. Or randomizing it. We could also change it from 16th notes to 30 seconds, or eighths, or quarters. Let's put it back to 16th notes, and let's try to randomize the part. That sounds pretty good. Now, if we're happy with this, we want to record it. Just go to Reaper and put it in record. And we can record the arpeggio we created, like this. Now, it just keeps repeating. So let's cut it off over here. Let's remove these two notes at the end. This way the part will be different from this bar to this one. And then duplicate it from here to here. And let's see what we got. Let's take it out of record so we're not hearing the controller. Just the MIDI parts we recorded. Sounded pretty good. Now let's move on to the drums. I already set up a Satala drum machine. And what's nice about this is by default, these drums are triggered by half steps, C2, C sharp two, and so on. So by default, these 16 pads should line up with this drum machine. So let's record a drum part. And I have it set over here to record MIDI overdub so we can record our part in multiple passes, like this.
Sounding good. Let's move on to our bass. Already set up a Zebralet plugin with a bass sound ready to go. Let's hear it. It's a bit too low. So to transpose it higher, hold down the shift key and move the big knob. That's better. But instead of playing this part, let's use the arpeggiator feature. Let's turn off the synth. Put the notes back. Let's hear it with the synth. Sounding good? Let's record that part. But this last note on number 12, I only like it every other time. So we can perform this live by turning it off and just turning it on when we need it, like this. Let's hear it back. Perfect. Now for the last synth, the lead synth, we can perform this like a keyboard. Put it into record. Here's the sound. Let's record a lead part. Let's start off with a blank MIDI item. Control on the PC. Command on the Mac. This way I could start recording in the middle and have it overlap the first half, like this. Sounded pretty good. And like I said earlier, we can use the knobs and pads to control anything in Reaper. I'm going to make a video in the future showing how to do this for all the Reaper commands. But just to go over it briefly, we can set up the pads to mute and unmute our tracks. We'll use the knobs to control any faders or plugin knobs using continuous control data. Let's solo the synth, open it back up. And right down here is a filter that's affecting this synth. So we can control this filter using any knob on this controller, even the big knob. Just touch it as the last touched parameter, go to the menu, go to learn, and just move any of the knobs. Could be the big knob or the little ones. Let's try this one. The Reaper sees it right here. Hit OK. Now we can adjust it right from here. So we can control it for live performance or even record it as automation data using envelopes. So these knobs can control any parameter in Reaper. But I'll go deeper into this in a future video. For now, this is the Arteria BeatStep Pad Controller in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.
Bye.